Welcome to Gelasset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and Gelassets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some good news, even though it looks bad. First up, 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin from Mt. Gox hack might spook crypto markets, and this is exactly what I'm praying for. Also, Peace and Market Watch had me wondering, where it states half of Americans over 55 may retire poor. There's two things. First of all, it's a lie, because they're not going to retire poor or may retire poor. It should say they will retire poor. And the next big question is, how is that gonna affect everybody globally as far as the other people who are 55 and over in other countries? But first, let's break into the market. So today, it is Monday, October 5th, and it's about one o'clock p.m. Texas time. And what do we got? Well, pretty good news, actually. Bitcoin is almost at 10.7, went up 0.6% in 24 hour time frame. Again, I'm very impressed with what's going on in the market. Uh, especially with BitMEX legal issues, plus the President of the United States getting uh, coronavirus, uh, these two different things, they were talking about going to crash the market. I said I could either do one of two things, little dip or big dip. And it looks like it just be a little dip and uh, not too bad. If this would happen in 2017, we would have crashed to the ground. So uh, I believe this market is uh, roaring and is going to do big things over the next one to two years. Also, Ethereum has a 350. It's, it's still above, so we're pretty happy. Tether's tether, <laughs> about a dollar. XRP, 25 cents. Watch out, almost 25. Finance coin still in that number five position, but I just saw a story about their portfolio of DeFi projects had lost like 50% of their value. So uh, not too good for uh, just Binance, the actual exchange. Binance coin, hey, not too bad, up 8.3% for the week, but uh, the exchange, yeek. Bitcoin Cash down almost a point. Polkadot up 1%, 417. Like to see that. Chainlink has dropped below 10. Womp womp. Crypto.com up 0.7. Let's see, is there anything fantastic to report? Because the rest of this is kind of boring. NEM 9.5. That's pretty good. I don't know why. Hey, whoever owns NEM, congratulations. I don't own any of that. Wrap Bitcoin 0.4. Yeah, sure. Zcash up 1.8. And if you didn't know, uh, Gemini just got the go ahead to allow for private transactions with Zcash from their uh, exchange. And they actually went to the, the uh, New York State. So kudos to them actually getting that going. Oh man, Uniswap down 11%. Son of a gun. 330. OMG Network up 4. Ugh, Celsius down 6. But still uh, at, at over $1.25. Congratulations, Celsius holders. I can't hold them uh, much of it because I'm in Texas. I don't know how it works in the rest of the United States, but uh, I can't gain interest on, on cell, uh, to get Celsius. I have to get it in dollars or Bitcoin. Uh, but I wish I would have gotten Celsius. Unfortunately, my state doesn't allow that. And uh, that's pretty much about it. So um, not a bad day considering all the things that are happening. So let's just jump into the big story. First up, I see these headlines about Mount, Mount Gox and I'm always like, who cares? I, I, I just don't get it. But uh, 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin from Mount Gox might spook crypto markets. I mean, I get the whole thing about if they're going to dump a bunch of Bitcoin on people who had invested in this back in like 2013, 14, whenever the, when the hack was. So they're going to sell a bunch. And for me, I'm like, great. Sell it all you want, because guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> I've got money in the bank, and I'm just waiting for you guys to get rid of it so I can gobble it up. But whatever you want to do, uh, that's fine with me. So here's a little backstory. Uh, there was a Japanese-based exchange called Mt. Gox, and uh, it was said to have handled over 80% of all Bitcoin transactions in its early years. Well, guess what happened? Uh, in 2014, ah, that's right, 2014, uh, almost a million Bitcoin or 740,000 Bitcoin was hacked and uh, it all just went away. But it led to the exchange going bankrupt, which makes a lot of sense because when you lose that much Bitcoin, you can't come back from it. I don't care what year it is. Now it says while 200,000 Bitcoin were eventually recovered, that's amazing, uh, the whereabouts of the remaining 650 remain a mystery. Hold on. Let me see here. Let me do some quick math. If you got 650 plus 200, I'm pretty sure that's 850,000. But it says here that 740,000 Bitcoin were hacked in 2014. So maybe someone could correct that in the comments section. I'm not for sure. But let's just say this. A lot of Bitcoin was lost. However, under Japanese law and case coverage available here and here, creditors were liable to receive a chunk of their lost funds at massively inflated prices, which, you know, it's pretty good, right? I mean, if you invest all the way back then, and then wouldn't that suck if you invested all the way back then and you were looking at 2017 December going, wow, 
there goes Bitcoin, almost 20,000. Wish I would have had, you know, my 100 that I invested into Mt. Gox, but of course it got hacked. That would suck. States here, the funds were earlier supposed to be returned on July 1st. This is, they're going to give this back to all the different investors. So it's supposed to go back on July 1st, but a court hearing delayed it to an October date, which is October 15th. So we're looking at 10 days. It's it's going to go back. But here's my question, everybody. I cannot find an answer for the life of me. So if you had 200,000 returned, right? And there was whatever this number is, let's just say 600,000. So 600,000 is supposed to be returned back to people. And they're going to give back roughly 150,000 in this in this one. Yeah. Under the terms of creditors are said to cumulatively receive over 150,000 Bitcoin. So this story keeps coming up. And it seems like every time I read it, it's like, oh, these you know, these people that got hacked, they're going to get all this Bitcoin. It's going to crash the whole market. Well, it never really does. But I'm just I'm just saying to myself, I'm like, well, how many times is this going to happen? Is, there has to be like a limit when these people actually get all their Bitcoin back. Because if you lost around 600000 there should be a point where it's like, okay, you guys are paid off. Now go away. Do whatever you want. So help me in the comment section too because uh, I could not find how much is left to give back. Is this the last installment or we're going to have like 20 more of these things? So it seems like these stories come out like every six months states here while some of these creditors may choose to hold others will sell for a profit over 300 percent yeah i think so and this is where it always gets funny i i just love it when these when these uh publications they start to quote uh these different people's names and you know anonymous popular twitter account mr whale joe blow john gunn it's just it just sounds so ridiculous but i mean it is what it is uh meanwhile mr whale an anonymous twitter account states this if 150,000 bitcoin is sold in the market it would cause a brutal drop and fear would quickly spread across the market. So that's pretty much it. The rest was boring. The, the, the whole thing comes out of this. I'm, I'm praying and I'm hoping that all these people sell because I want them to sell and I want the market to go down. Uh, the you know We just saw the, the price of Bitcoin. I'm hoping it goes down below 10,000. That would be fantastic. And if it goes below nine, even better. Uh, because when I'm looking at this, I'm just an investor. I'm not a trader. So when things start to go down, I get pretty excited. I, I didn't used to because I used to dump. Like when I first got in 2017, I dumped a bunch of money in and I should not have done that. I should have just dollar cost average like I do now. And then when all these dips happen, I don't have this, you know, like this crushing tightness in my chest going, shoot, I just lost 30%. I can go, hey, I got money on the sidelines. I'm ready. So if you believe that Bitcoin is going to go up, this is actually huge. So if you look at like uh, this was just came out uh, today. This is from Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg Professional Services and their analysts have said, hey, Bitcoin's on track for 100,000 in 2025. Now, that's very conservative. If we just, let's just stick to a conservative number, 100,000 in 2025, but it's not just them. They also, there's another one, asset manager for ARK Investment said that Bitcoin could reach a 3 trillion market cap by 2025. So again, they're talking about the same type of year, 2025, sure, whatever. Um, if you believe in this one or Tim Draper, where his assessment is it's going to be 250,000, uh, I believe Bitcoin is going to go somewhere north of 100K. That's all I can say. If you have a $3 trillion market cap here, that's around $160,000 per Bitcoin as it stands right now. And then if you take a look down here, and they go from $3 trillion all the way up to $5 trillion. And this is actually from Adam Back. He is the um, CEO of Blockstream. He's a big Bitcoin uh, maximalist. And he said that's pretty conservative. He agrees with this whole thing. He says, hey, could be a trillion dollar market cap within two years probably sooner and again that is a super super conservative uh type of number just in 2017 when we were just all on vaporware and white paper uh it was the entire market cap was 850,000 850 yeah 850 billion excuse me so it was almost at a trillion but that was of course uh bitcoin still had a major dominance but that wasn't everything of course that was bitcoin and xrp and ethereum and all the different low caps but uh bitcoin was a large uh, part of that maybe 65 70 percent can't remember someone correct me in the comment section but to get to a trillion i don't see it uh being that big of a deal and for 50k to come around sure let's make it the most conservative you can possibly think of if bitcoin goes down to below 10,000 and you can pick it up for that amount, whatever it is, you could 5X your, your investment in one to two years and try doing that anywhere else, especially in the stock market, especially what's gonna happen with the stock market pretty soon uh, if you believe all the different predictions. So, I mean, there's no other way that you can possibly do that anywhere else.
even land and real estate investment, uh, pretty darn tough to 5X everything. Or if you wanna look at like 100,000, 10X, or 250,000, 25X. Just very hard to do. So let me know what you think in the comments section, which leads me to the next article.